what would you do if you weren't acting? Let's say you could take a crew role. What what mm. would you do on the crew if you if you had a choice? You know, if you had a choice, maybe the uh, cinematography. You know, behind oh, the that camera. That sounds good. Yeah, that sounds my mom cool. was a was a portrait artist, so I just you know something about framing it up and you know, yeah. creating that composition is pretty. And you know what what they do I and mean, this like the artistry is so amazing. Rather sure. you're making, you know, I watch student films that are incredible nowadays. It, let alone, you know, some massive Spielberg film or whatever, but yeah. That, that is interesting how the mediums have, the quality has gone through the roof, right? Yeah. Like streaming, t TV, movie, right? I mean, sometimes, a lot of times, television is better than film now, sometimes. Right. Big shit. weird there. way. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah absolutely. Like that's, absolutely. That's crazy. Uh, just like the shows you're on. I mean, they're great. These that's aren't right. shows that, that would have happened before, really, and been that, I don't know, you know, they might have been more campy and now they're just so well made. The production yeah, well, what's, is so high. What's good is that as like, you know, as filmmakers and you know, creators have started to raise the bar, everyone has to kind of keep, you know, raising their own bar to to, to stay competitive. And it's sure. I, I think it's been great for television. You know, we you yeah. you have to bring it now. You yeah. know, scripts need to be good and you know, actors need to show up and you know, so that is good. Keeps everyone on their toes, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's keeps like a really going. total fun time, I think, to be in, in our business. You know? Sure. You know, I had uh, Jim Beaver on, who was on Supernatural and yeah. amongst uh, Deadwood, you know, amongst other things. Uh, of course. Sh shared with the Walker uh, star here, the screen for a long time. Um, and he, <laughs> he said something really great in a podcast we did um, that, like, you know, just asking him, you know, you've been in this business so long, man, you know, like, uh, yeah, I remember seeing him in Turner and Hooch for Christ's sakes, All right. <laughs> uh, you know, and, uh, and I was, you know, he's just like, look, man, it's real simple. It's like, look, you, you want to show up to set, know your lines, show up on time. Don't be an asshole. Don't hold up the production, right? Don't hold up the crew. Don't hold up. I mean, it's real to me, it, to him, it seems so simple to keep getting work and keep, right. you know what I mean? It was like, I just do these things and and try to bring the director's vision out right like it's not just me and right. that that sort of attitude you know, so i did a series with jim beaver years ago called harper's island on cbs oh, and and, yes. and he yeah great great show it really was like ahead of its time i think and jim yeah. beaver was it's funny you bring him up I, I i would you know second everything you just said about it he, he sort of taught me how to be a a classy professional you know to be like a really um quality actor i think and, and all those things on screen and off and like everything you said he's, he's one of the greatest guys i've ever known and he's wow. such a such a great actor and can do anything and so i'm always yeah. grateful for him for you know setting the example i guess and i'm like i'm gonna you know do what do what jim does so that's awesome man yeah um wow so many people so many actors say so many great things about him uh steven yeah. tobolowski i remember had the nicest things to say about him as well uh, that they worked on Deadwood together. Um, yeah. Wow. That's great. Uh, you know what? He's just a smart dude too. Like I yeah. felt like out of loop talking to him a little bit. I was like, Oh shit. Like I, I should have studied like literature more. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, there's no way for me to catch up to the guy. That's uh, right. Yeah, that's, that's great to hear. Yeah. Great no, to no. Hear. You make you feel uh, bad about yourself. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's like, Jim, listen, can we do a round two and let me study some Hitchens for exactly. like exactly. six months, exactly. right? I'll come back to you. Uh, you know, speaking of uh, like working different parts of the crew, you know, you said cinematography, but you're also right now, you sort of are doing, you know, some st outside stuff outside of acting with this new film um, that you have coming up. Right. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. The 12 uh, Mighty Orphans. Yeah. Which is, yeah. is such a cool story. Yeah. Uh, let's just d dive into this, man, because this yeah. is like Texas, Texas as Texas gets. And like, I love it. Everything about it. It's one of the greatest Texas stories I've ever read. And if you're from Texas, I've, you know, you, you've probably heard of this or, or, or someone, you know, in your family has read this book, but yeah, you know, when I was, I mean, this has been about 15 years in the making. And oh, wow. I remember my dad, my dad called me one morning. I, I was in LA kind of an up and coming actor, um, early twenties, I'd say. And he read this article about this book that was being released and said, Matt, by the way, my, Backstory: my, my dad was a college football coach, coached at SMU. Oh, really? Oh, wow. So, yeah. So, so our big football family goes, it's Fort Worth, Texas. It's football. It's orphans. You know, it's this inspiring, you know, underdog story. I thought, good Lord. So how has nobody but, made this, right? Is that what well, you're Well, I mean, I mean, the, but you're right. I mean, the, the book was like just being released that week. So 
we both got the book and read it in about two days. And I called <laughs> dad and I said, dad, this is like the greatest movie that hasn't been made yet. Like we got to go. Wow. Like, I know nothing about producing a movie necessarily, but let's go buy the rights. So somehow, you know, a couple idiots went and with the, <laughs> with my, my best friend, Ryan Ross, who's from, um, from Dallas as well. He, uh, we went and, you know, optioned the rights to this, this, uh, book. And then later on ended up buying the rights and just shopped it around town for years and had a screenplay written and then, you know, rewritten. And it, it was like a film school to me, but I, you know, making movies is a, is a miracle to get one made and, you know, yeah. let alone a period football story. But I knew that like this, this movie at some point would get made and it's a great story. And, you know, being a Texan, I'm so proud of these, you know, wonderful Texas stories that, you know, are kind of speak to me in a special way. So, and sure. to do it with my dad and best friend was pretty special. So, oh, that's awesome. Um, so it's, you know, that's amazing. Yeah. And tell us about the actors that are, uh, well, this is what I read from the article, right? So there's some, there's some, I read from the one article, there's a, there's a little bit of the way with COVID and everything has sort of affected production and how that goes. So is the, the film is in the can. I mean, it's actually filmed. It's done. Films, films in the can. Yeah. We, we part with these, this great, these great guys out of, out of Dallas, you know, basically uh, Ty Roberts, Houston Hill to name a few, they, they went and financed this thing independently, but um, yeah, you know, we got Luke Wilson and Martin Sheen and Robert Duvall, who's probably, you know, my hero wow. in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. It's a great Vanessa Shaw, Wayne Knight, um, and oh, uh, Wayne Knight, yeah, and Newman. then really these, Beautiful. yes, I know, I know, and then these young actors that they went and just, I think, disco discovery is the right word, you know, like just yeah. fabulous young actors. Some of them you you may have seen in something, some of them you might not. A lot of them you probably haven't, but um, you know, there there are a lot of the magic of the movie. But what's fun about Luke is Luke Wilson, you know, the the Wilson brothers are from Dallas. Yeah, I you know, went to St. Mark's and um, I've had a chance to meet them over the years. So it's always fun to, you know, cast awesome. a Texan in a, in a great Texas role. So no, that's great. He plays the coach, right? It's the co uh, what's his Rusty name? Rusty Russell. Uh, yeah, Rusty Russell. That's right. He plays coach Rusty Russell. Yeah. Uh, and I also read that Robert Duvall and Martin Sheen. It's the first movie they've been in since Apocalypse Now. You know, and I didn't know that until. Yeah. Until they, they met on set. How crazy uh, is that? Isn't that's that crazy? Nuts. You know, yeah. I wasn't there that day. I was, I think, across the world filming Blood and Treasure, but my dad was there. And I remember they, like, Duvall came in for a fitting and Martin Sheen was filming and they, they, they locked eyes and they, they walked to each other and gave each other a big hug and had tears wow. in their eyes. And I thought, oh, this is just, you know, <laughs> if there's ever shit. a moment. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. Wow. That is incredible. That's amazing. So... But um, yeah, Sony Picture Classics is is distributing it because of COVID. I wish I had more of an exact date. You know, it was yeah, totally. it was going to be April. And now I'm I'm not quite sure. Things have been disrupted a bit, but we'll you know we'll continue to get the word out about when that comes out. 